all aboard the Baron and Raskin Express, ladies and gentlemen. I needed that, and I think a lot of Rangers fans would have needed that. Also, come in, strap yourselves in. Hello, everyone, this is Season Over 992, and today we're back from the brand new video. And we're here to talk about a happy topic and a good performance. By God! Does it feel nice? Now, of course, I do need to preference this because I know there's going to be a lot of people diving right into the comment section. Well, wait a minute, you can't fool yourself. Didn't get lost in it or anything. It's just this. It's just that. It was just FC. SB, we should be beating them. You know we're still in trouble. You know everything's no fixed overnight. And I get and I understand why people are going to be saying that and there will be people that's protecting themselves almost because they've been beat down and lit down too many times by players in that dressing room with so many, so many false dawn so they're protecting themselves and they're staying away from it and they didn't want to get hot hyped up and enjoy the hysteria of these types of European nights. Again, I understand why they're doing that and for a lot of it I do agree with you. There is certain players in that dressing room I don't trust to take us to the old promised land but where I'm a little bit different is I like to be able to enjoy the wins and I think as angry as you get with the losses you should be as happy and being able to enjoy the wins and that's what we're here to talk about today. Obviously no everything's fixed and Obviously not every problem has been solved, but it's a results driven business and we won the day and if we can't enjoy that, if we can't enjoy a 4-0 scudding at home in the old Europa League, what can you actually enjoy, you know what I mean, you've got to be able to see in that, and there was certain performances that we're going to break down throughout the actual video, that you can get behind, couple bright sparks that I will get excited to buy, and maybe I will be daft and sit and film myself and say, oh he's going to play this, he's going to play him he's going to trust him, going further maybe all that, won't he come true, but see the feeling I've got the new and the happiness and the fact that I'll be sitting in my bed the night sleeping like is what being a football fan is all about, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I am very happy at this, but I am not fooling myself and thinking it's all fixed overnight. Nana, ladies and gentlemen, and I think we'll all talk about that. FCSB, before we really dive in the meat and ties and I speak about a couple of players that really impressed me the day, you will get people coming out here and saying, oh, it was the reserve team, it was a reserve team for Romania. And if you see that comment, can you just come closer for a second? Then he respond to it. Do not bite to the bait at all, ladies and gentlemen. Because if they're saying that, all they're doing is showing just how blissfully unaware and how naive they actually are. Because what you saw in that starting 11 was a several key players missing. Absolutely. But were they rotated? Were they rested? No, all of them. Troops again. Darius, their captain, missed this game. Do you know why? Because he was suspended. So, hey, the guy in the middle of the park, arguably the most consistent midfielder, missed this game. Was he dropped or rotated out to protect them for the league football because they wanted to play reserves? No, he was given compassion at leave. They brought in several players that they weren't able to make the last game. The likes of Zawa didn't play in the most recent game of football, one of the rotations, one of the reserves. This is a guy that's linked with potentially a Premier League move, even though I think that might be a little bit premature in terms of the old Romanian media. I know there's been a couple of scouts apparently for his Fulham of that, looking at the laddie, but I wouldn't really class him up to that level, a certain Calvin Bass, he's certainly doing well right there, and you've seen that with their other rotations, well, their other centre-back the night that I'm not going to actually name because I can't pronounce it properly and I don't want to offend anybody, he's their best centre-half, he comes back in, they were still playing their best striker, they played their two strongest wingers that they're capable of doing as Tenasi's picked up a little bit of an injury, I know there was a couple rotation, the likes of the left back former Hearts player and Hamilton player I actually believe and that's not exactly the biggest and best test will come against but again, all the smokes and mirrors and all the naive and mind games that was fired out by a manager that looks like he, someone asked me to drop Buffon for memory and this is what I went out and fired out all he was doing was a bit of mind games. Then they get lost in that, ladies and gentlemen. There were still good players out there, some of the strongest players out there that was available to be selected. They came here to frustrate, they came here to play into the negativity and bang up a lot of drums to get that type of distraction. What they got was their scants pulled down and sent back to Romania. And if you want a pretty in your face blatant example to back up everything I've just said, every player we spoke about in yesterday's preview where it was a part of the graphics for the Romanian side, talking about their best defender, their best midfielder that they've got available, their best winger and their best striker, every player we spoke about and showed in the graphics, a part of yesterday's upcoming build for this game, every one of them went ahead and played. And if it was a B team, if it was a reserve squad, are you playing your best in every position? 
I don't think so, ladies and gentlemen. But I do want to move away from that because whether it is their starters or whether it is rotational players coming in to actual play, I always feel like a Rangers team should be able to beat an FCSB side. That's just what I think, especially at Ibrox. So I'm not going to go too over the top with this. Or anything like I feel like we should be winning them. And that's what we went ahead and done. But again, I can be happy and excited to talk about some of the individual performances that we were able to see. And I thought the starting 11 was what it was, you know. I mean, it's just Clermont being Clermont. That's who he is as a manager. You know who's going to be playing every week. You know who's his favourites. And something we spoke about prior to the game, if you follow me on Twitter or X, whatever the hell it's called these days, is I did point out, I feel like we're going to win the day. I did fire the out at the time. I believe we would win this game if football but it is a bit of a damning statement when you look at us starting 11 with Rangers and say no matter how badly certain players play there is zero repercussions and there's zero threat and there's zero worry to certain players losing their starting 11 spot in this side and look I know we won 4 nothing. I know people want to be excited I know might, some people might call me negative here but I feel like this is an important thing to talk about when you are winning because when you're losing it's easy because you just want to keep doing this doing this but when you're winning you should be able to look back on it and and all that as well, and that's what we went ahead and done the day. I just we wish, and I do think there is something in that that the fact that we never drop players, no matter how badly they play. There's certain players win, lose, or draw well, average or crap play every single week and I just feel like that's maybe what's missing for this changing room what's missing for these managers and what's missing to keep this side successful so would they just have one-off nights like this or we six month spells or three month spells they playing well I feel like if there was genuine threat you having to perform or you're losing the start in Jersey would maybe be a bit more of a successful side ladies and gentlemen but again that's what the starting 11 told me anyway but I know we went ahead and won 4-0 so I <laughs> screw me in that aspect but I just wanted to talk about that because I've talked about enough when we lose we won the day but I was still a little bit disappointed several players were picked because why are they getting picked I'd like to bring up the likes of Nana has had one start and in his first start he picked up a man of the match award versus Malmo and since he's been dropped to the bench and hasn't started again so you seem to get we seem to be the only club in world football that punishes players for playing well and rewards players for playing poorly that may sound like a mad statement but think about it. Think of several players. Nana, one start. Manny Match hasn't started. Again, how many stinkers can you think for the likes of the Dessers and the Tavs over the season? It is a bit silly. But anyway, whether the frustrations and all, we still had to go at the park and day. And after a couple of long balls in the first 30 seconds of the game of football, we did start off pretty well. And I thought the zip and the pressure was important in this game. And that's what takes me to the couple of players that I want to bring up right away and talk in a positive nature. And it was that midfield partnership of Connor Barron and Raskin. Something a lot of us have been speaking about for a while and would have been maybe if Raskin didn't pick up a pre-season injury or if I get the vibe and feeling that Clement actually likes we were asking, we might have seen that mayor, but I thought they were so damn important the day and the way this went, because before we start about how the game could have went in terms of a butlin mistake and a possible VAR disaster and everything like that, I do want to talk about what helped us in this game, and that was Connor Barrett and Raskin providing us just the platform to go ahead and win the ball. See their energy, their drive pressing and setting the press and demanding other players to press. I just love the way they approach the game, you know what I mean? One sat and one ran about like a dog mental going ahead and win the ball. And then the only, and they never ran each other out. Name they was blown out their arse after 10 minutes. They took it in turns. And I just thought the partnership was really, really good today. And I thought their energy was infectious. And you saw it for the likes of Cherney on the other side. You saw it for Lawrence when he was on. Then you saw it for Diamande at the 10. You saw it for Barami. And I just thought, for the first time in a long time, I've actually liked the energy for the middle of the park. And for the first time in a long time, I feel like we actually won the midfield battle, even the likes of Malmo, even the likes of some of the good wins we've had, I've never felt happy looking at the middle of the park, but I thought Raskin and Barron deserved their flowers tonight at least, and I would like to see them get a runny, consistent game time together, as I am a running out my breath, ladies and gentlemen, but I would like to see what that partnership could potentially be, because obviously there's going to be difficult tests and different ones to the FCSB, absolutely offered, especially what they were missing, but it was promising, and there were so near, and that's no something I've said a lot about the middle of the park, just the bite and that, and if you stay for the rest of the 
the match recap, you'll hear a lot about how they impacted into the game and just their energy was brilliant and it was needed and everything like that, along with our boy Cherney who answered a couple more critics again tonight. But we'll get there as I'll need to start the game off with what could have been, you know what I mean? You're talking about Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors as this game and this reaction could have been completely different and everyone's already forgot about it. The first minute of this game. There was a bit of a madness from Jack Butland who looked like Steven Gerrard. If you know, you know. He missed a penalty and a Liverpool manager was sacked. Well, Jack Butland looked like he was trying to get Claymont sacked because I just don't know what he's doing. He gets the ball back. He delays. He delays. He falls over. FCSB's got the ball in the back in it, but it's given as a foul. And I'm sitting saying, oh my God, this is going to be Varden. This is going to be Varden. Var's going to check this. It's going to be 1-0 one, one to FCSB. This is the worst possible start. For his football club, I'm sick. What is Jack Butland even doing? But thankfully, VAR didn't intervene troops. Nana. And at one point, I was thinking, we VAR the people. Well in VAR, you've got our backs today. But the reason I think it wasn't given is a goal because there is absolutely zero foul on Jack Butland. The reason FCSB doesn't take the lead in this game is because the referee is blue for a foul before the balls went in to the back in eight. Take us back to a couple of weeks ago, five, six weeks ago versus St. Johnson with the whole controversy around that. The fact that VAR was able to give the goal was because the ref allowed the, the passage of play to play out before blowing a foul. European referees' egos are outrageous. We've been on the other hand, these ridiculous performances. Remember, Jeff, they remember why we got knocked out of the Champions League qualifier. So you could say what goes around comes around and we maybe get the other side of that one, just £40 million less than what would have actually been possible for the referee. But aye, the referee blew the whistle early before the ball went in the back in it. VAR can't change and overcome the outcome and that remains and keeps it, thankfully, deuce eggs. But thankfully that scare was as bad as it got for Rangers as we started to get in the ball and again the midfield was stopped being bypassed by long balls. They started winning 50-50s, they started winning the ball back and look, they weren't that amazing. I'm not sitting here saying there's the second coming or that. There was some frustrating misplaced passes or maybe they're just not good enough on the ball to really penetrate in behind there was a couple wee chances I get what people are going to say but see just winning the ball back just the simple stuff that's overlooked in the modern game creates such a difference for this team it gets the crowd involved it gets the crowd up and it bleeds in and goes in to the other players as you saw them buying in the idea and that's when we started winning the balls that's when we started winning 50-50s that's when we started to create several opportunities the only one really was Worth noting and breaking down here before we put the ball in the back of it was Raskin winning the ball back, wriggling in between two and forcing a shot for the goalie, which again will get overlooked and forgot. But that's just why I like that laddie, you know what I mean? And I've been frustrated to see him. And yes, he's played poorly when he's been given some opportunities over the last couple of weeks. But I looked at him the day and I said, that's who I thought you could be. Just somebody to inject something into a Rangers team. And again, it just keeps everything moving. It stops the groans. It stops the frustrations. It starts putting the op opposite opposition sorry under pressure and it builds and it builds and it builds and that's where we ended up taking the lead in the game of football as Tavernier and Cherney combine a couple times down the right hand side Cherney then plays it into Lawrence brilliantly with a great pick out no just firing the ball into an area no just trying to hit it to Dessers who's probably marking the fourth official or something like that getting his heat up and playing it right to Tom Lawrence who just runs on it and it's funny right because I've said many times despite my frustrations with Tom Lawrence over the years and this guy's driven me crazy especially at the end of last year where I thought he just sold the jerseys. I have called him the best striker, the cleanest striker of the ball at our club and it has felt like that for a long, long time but it just shows you with all the screamers and all the brilliant finishes and the crisp shots that he scored for us already this season. This one on the European night hits the back in it because I'm pretty sure it hits it off his left foot and it's just got the weirdest trajectory I've ever seen. It ends up bouncing, beating the goalie, completely does him with that one. It's in the back in it and it's a brilliant opener for Lawrence. Did he mean it? Nah. Does it matter? Nah. And it's 1-0 to Rangers and it's funny, right, to put really into the context of how mad this season is and how frustrating it is and what it's to be like to be a Rangers fan right now. That's Tom Lawrence scored as a number 10 
in back-to-back -back European games, scoring his fifth goal in his last seven appearances for this team with a cheeky assist to boot as well. And he does play with um, Cyril Dessers, by the way, so you know that sh the assist total should be a wee bit higher. You're looking at those stats, you're looking at those impacts, you're looking at the games he won, the likes of Hibs and everything like that. That is someone that should be heralded as this, but despite all that, how mad the season is, he's one of the players that drives us absolute mental and half the fan base, fan base Disney want to see starting 11, yet he is kind of carrying us in games, and that just shows you what an absolute mess and frustration, but to be fair to Tom Lawrence, again, I hold my hands up, he's doing the business, we love to see it, putting the ball in the back of net is the hardest job in football, and he's doing it right now, and I was excited, and the way he was linking up playing, he was playing in Barami, he was playing with Chen, he was getting back and helping, he was buying into the idea with Barron, he was buying into the idea with Raskin, I was going, right, I'm actually liking the way Tom Lawrence is playing right now, dare I say, I can see this, and I would pick Tom Lawrence on current form being our starting number 10, then you know exactly what happens in the 44th minute, he just gets injured every time! He starts to play well, but before the Tom Lawrence injury, there was some actual good play, and again, a lot of it was maybe the ugly side, and if you're the start lovers, and if you love just highlights, and if you love just shots, and that's not really going to get you, but for me, I can sit back and enjoy the dirty side of the game. You all know, like, the Jackals, and that's been my favourite players, because I'm just one of those weird guys that just likes the dirty side of football, the ends that does the hard yards, and I just thought from the moment we scored about the 10th minute to about the 28th minute, see the way we just won the ball back? Raskin running here, Barron running here, getting in here, winning this, getting this, Cherney coming back, making that big sprint, winning with a slide challenge here, Barami trying to do it on the other side. I don't think he actually gets anything on the ball, if I'm honest with you, but he ends up forcing the opposition to kick the ball to play, and it's just like, yeah, boys, just bite in, you know what I mean? We might not be the greatest team in the world, but we can work our arse off and run ourselves into the ground, and that's what we were doing up to that point. We had another shot around about the 20th minute, but just around that time as well, there was a possible penalty call as Jeff Day plays down the left-hand side, playing it to Barami. Barami tries a wee clever pass inside the box. It hits the defender's hand, you know what I mean? He's sliding on the deck, the ball hits him and clearly it's a handball. Last season, it's a handball, but I think now with the new rules and what they're, they're trying to see or trying to implement to tidy up with the disaster that football has became, I don't think it's a penalty in 2024. And before we did put the ball at the back of net for the second time, the only real highlight in terms of incident to break down was around about the 26th minute where Tavernier done a wee homage to our boy Kamal Roof. No, he didn't score through the halfway line and a flooded car park. Nana, nana, nah. he'd almost took a goal out and broke him in two, but thankfully there was no facial bones broken this time and the goal he was able to perform and Tavernier didn't get sent off. He just got a cheeky little yellow. So that was really it. Then FCSB reminds us they have got quality and they've got several of their starters and best players and higher rated players, higher transfer fees, if you will, in the starting 11 as they play a short free kick at the edge of the box. Dessers is a bit sleeping here. He leaves his man and his man, Philippe Louise, hits a shot from range that's well saved by Butler. And you're thinking, right, at least Butler doesn't want him sacked that badly. He's letting that bad boy in. And what's great is from eventually winning a goal kick about three or four minutes later, we score an absolute beauty of a goal and it just makes me happy I get to say that and the reason it's so beautiful is not only is it great finish by Cherney but it's got the dirty side as well as we've got that high press we've got that intensity for Rask and Lawrence putting pressure on that forces a mistake the ball then goes to Cherney who fakes it onto his left foot and he gets everybody and their nan to believe that as they've all seen he's one footed they all believe it which means he can shift on his right foot and he curls it beautifully with a cheeky R1 circle if you know you know and what's great about that goal as well is it's not only his second goal with his right foot in the last couple of weeks but it does back up something we talked about in the player preview video because I'll tell you son come here for I was getting cooked online and in the comment section by a lot of you is because in the player profile I talked about how many goals Cherney scored with his right foot and how much of a weapon it has actually been. Yes, he's left footed but he scores a lot with his right and after the first couple of weeks, by God, I didn't think he used his right foot. I mean, the only time he was using it was to stand on it to hit it with his left foot. So you are cooking me a little bit but now you're starting to see because he is so left footed and people know how dangerous of a weapon that is. When he does shift it, he can hit it with his right 
and he creates chances and mismatches like he did the day. And it was a brilliant first goal by Chenna, who continues to build up his confidence and belief, again, providing on what he then goes to do later on. And it's the second goal of the game, which just gets the crowd gone. And I wouldn't say it kills the game off, because 2 one's always a very dangerous scoreline that, but it just made you feel well, like, yeah. We're going to win this. And the third goal should have came round about the 44th minute after some great build-up build up, sorry, play by Barami. Gets the ball on the left-hand side, nutmegs his man beautifully, runs to the byline, plays it back, it drops the Cherno, whose volley's blocked by the defender. Brilliant block by Big Dawa. And then comes out to Tavernier, he headers it back to him. Lawrence has a shot, it's a bit of a goal mouse scramble everywhere. There's blocks, 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 and then Lawrence's, I think, third volley attempt during 60 seconds of play ends up going out for a throw in, and you're thinking breathless. You're, like, you're almost laughing because you're like, yeah, this is fun to watch. Then the ball goes there. Lawrence falls down. Looks like he twists his noon. Then he's doing injured. You're thinking, ah, yeah, that makes sense. And that seems to be the recurring theme with Lawrence. Every time you're thinking, right, I might start believing in him. I might start giving him my trust. Unfortunately, he seems to catch the injury bug. Now, he did be able to play the last couple of minutes before going off at halftime and been that might be Clement learning his lesson so he doesn't, you know, sacrifice Oscar Cortez to the injury gods like he did versus Hearts and he's done in previous occasions. He was a bit proactive now in his sub and hopefully that's protecting him. But aye, the Lawrence injury was the only worth thing or, or the only thing worth noting, I should say, before the end of the first half besides the likes of Barami blown a wee kiss to the opposition fans as he was walking off the park, which set the fans from Romania into a bit of a frenzy. But I like that, shithousery. More of that, please. But the Lauren substitution obviously opens the door for the likes of Diamande to come into the game. And what I liked about Diamande is he was yet to play in his natural position because there seems to be a bit of a crowd that's now turning on Diamande. And I get it, he's not been great for the last couple of weeks. But I think we often forget he's not a holding midfielder. He's never been that, yes, you could argue he was maybe a box-to-box -box player occasionally, but he did play a lot more offensively in a fr in a midfield three. That is where he played. He wasn't the holder. He wasn't the defender. He was the creative. He was the one to have shots. And he's been put back one under Clement, and he's been given that role besides Conor Barron, but that's no the role he plays. If it's in a midfield three, he's always been the most forward-thinking one and the one that wants to create and the one that wants to linger around the actual box. And I think if you go back and you look at a lot of your counter-attacks and the amount of times, dear man, he's out of position, dear man, he's out of position. He's actually playing into his instincts and gone towards the box trying to feed off stuff. And today, we might have lost Tom Lawrence to an injury, but we got to see dear man in the number 10 role bit more familiar to him, and I thought he was much, much better, and it's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, because you're sitting here talking about a player getting played in his natural position, and being surprised about how well he plays, compared to when he's played out a position, do you know just how simple it seems football can actually be sometimes, but we just never, ever do it, we've got to pray as a player getting to play 45 minutes in his preferred position, because we know he's going to be bumped back and played out of position, next week, but aye, we lost Tom Lawrence to injury, but we got to see a dear man day as the 10, and I was alright with that because it's better than Kieran Dowell going there because if we can't get Barami at the 10 maybe let Dio do it and remind everyone of his individual qualities, which he did as he finished this game with a brilliant assist. And before we really break down that goal, we've got to talk about Dessers because what happens when we do put the ball in the back of net for the third time as well, because around about the 51st minute he plays a simple wee ball in the middle, and I'll be honest, that was about maybe the sixth time Dessers touched the ball, I don't know how many times he touched it. One of them was for a kickoff. You were looking at Gabby Abonglahor's numbers, if you remember that meme a few years ago. I thought it was garbage today, right? Rotten, like rotten. Just wasn't involved in it at all. And I think you have to give praise to the rest, like the midfield eh, or the attacking three plus the two holders because their energy, their work rate, their desire made you forget that Dessers was just up there then. Absolutely nothing, you know what I mean? And people might say, oh, you've been too harsh, but it's no, it's the exact same embarrassing performance we saw at Rugby Park we've seen the day, but the only difference is we lost versus Killer and we won the day, so we can't overlook and pretend that that is any better. He was absolutely rotten and not involved and nothing. The only time, the only reason we're speaking about him the new. And what we're about 12 minutes in to a recap is because he falls down after he collides with someone's arm. Now, 
I don't know if it was an elbow to the face or anything like that. I've seen a couple of clips now online where it does look like there's maybe some connection there. And look, maybe there is, so I'm serious. I'm not wanting to go too much in it. But he is doing on the deck for a very, very long time. And from there, he then gets up after about three or four minutes. He wants the player sent off, but considering VAR must have looked at it and checked it, no sent him off, tells me there wasn't in too much actually in it. But the reason we mentioned it was because three minutes later, after a phenomenal piece of football that starts with Jack Butlin playing it in to wee Raskin. Raskin with a man on his shoulder, turning, playing the ball out to Tavernier, whose header comes in to the middle. Dio then gets the ball and plays a wonderful ball out to Cherney, and Cherney just sprints, just runs, runs, runs. Disney wait, Disney hesitate, Disney look for the overlap. He sticks to his natural instincts of being a winger that he's had his whole career, just drives into the box. We shimmy now where the defender sends him to the shop, cuts inside and tucks it in to the back of net. That is about as good as it gets. And there was a lot of build-up play that reminded me of that goal we scored. It was against Michelin years ago under, I think it was Gerard as well, where we started with the goalie. We played it in in the middle, but at that time, I'm pretty sure it was Kamara out to Tav. Tav to Haji. Haji down to the right-hand side of Ryan Kent, who then played it in to Alfredo Morelos. Or was it Kent that scored? Whatever way it unfolded, again, there's a lot of goals in this noggin. It was just a gorgeous bit. Of football, it wasn't a punt ball, it wasn't a hoof ball, it was players playing football the right way. And I know people say, that's because we're 2 0 up, we're winning this game, we're a better team than that. I get that. We should always be able to beat the likes AFCSB. But to those people that's going to be saying that all night, yes, we should be able to beat the likes AFCSB. But you can only ever beat what's in front of you. Is that correct? Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we don't do that enough because we should be winning our games in Scottish football. So, again, it's just depending on how you look at it. But I'm going to give credit to that goal. It was absolutely gorgeous. And as Cherny's away celebrating as the team, Dessers has gone up the tunnel, huffing and puffing and moaning. The building doing now. He does go doing it again in the box. And again, he's gone doing as much as my Wi-Fi connection. Look, I just can't be bothered with it anymore. Just fond do not time. Feeling sorry for himself. And look, maybe he's got another note to his eye. I'm filming this when I've came back. Got him up here because it's going to be 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning by the time this post. Maybe there is something. Maybe he has had something. If there is son more serious or if it is that fair enough I do apologise about that but again all I'm seeing is a player that's watching his teammates run and celebrate no being involved with it at all and huffing and puffing and going up you could at least crap, uh, clap the crowd you could at least clap your players or say well done to Cherney be happy you've scored you didn't just go right up the tunnel moaning and complaining moaning and complaining before Iggerman is even ready to come on the park that's just my opinion on that. I didn't like to see that. Love the goal, love the moment, but even that, it's got a wee tail in negativity. And after about a minute or two of playing with 10 men, because Dessers is up, the old tunnel, you've got the likes of Iggerman coming on the park, and it was brilliant to see, because I felt like he was flung under the bus at Dundee United when he was played out of position with the players that he was played with. Now, he did start the game as a striker, but if you saw the game, you know he had to go everywhere, because the, the midfield was just an absolute riot. But I was so excited, because again, you had that base, Raskin and Barron. You had Brami still on. You had the likes of Diamandi in his natural position. You had Cherney on. I went, right, if Iggerman isn't just a wee bright spark and he's just fizzled away, if he's actually got son, we'll see son the new then because this is about as good as it gets in a range of shots. We're playing well. There's confidence in the team. We've got the best players on the park. If he's got in, in we'll see it right now, no matter what the score is. And ladies and gentlemen, we saw it, and no surprise, it's wee Connor Barron's throwing his body on the line as he wins a challenge again that goes to Iggerman about 50, 60 yards out. But you know what I love about this is, this goal doesn't happen if Dessers is on the part. This goal doesn't happen if Danilo's on the part. This goal only happens because of the way Iggerman plays football. He just sizes his man up, sprints right at He's not looking for the pass. He's not trying to bounce it off. He's not trying to slow it down and play it backwards or not. He just runs straight. It is man, we shimmy, we step over and drills it into the bottom corner with almost a Jermaine Defoe style finish, hitting it on the early, no allowing the goalie to say, oh I like that for a laddie, especially a guy that's just so young and that was his first goal in a Ranger shirt but you would have never guessed it if you saw the composure in which he took it and it was brilliant to see the way we created the goal and it was brilliant to see the way he actually took it and again we only scored that because Iggerman's on the puck and that makes us a much more 
dangerous side. And if you are still here, and I know it's been a kind of long rambling video, and I know, and I know it's very late at night or early in the morning, depending on where you are in this world. But I look at the likes of Baron and Raskin. I think he Diamandi at the 10. I think he Barami on the left because, again, we've not got left, any left wingers right now. You've got Cherna there, and you've got Igaman leading the line. That's danger. That's threat. That's energy. That's something we've no had in a Rangers team for far too damn long. And the way that it went for Dessers with back-to-back -back performances, you could argue back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back because to back to back to back to back it's now six games without a goal for Dessers. He's been stinking lately, right? Are we finally going to reward someone for playing well? Because Eggerman's came on. He's going to be feeling like a million bucks tonight, scoring his first goal, playing that way. He nearly scored again five minutes later when he holds off the defender, throws him on the deck, hits a volley that's very well saved by the goalie. He's injected, son. He scored a goal that only he's scoring in a Rangers team. If that there doesn't they get rewarded with a start versus Samirin, what the hell? Are we actually doing If it's back to the old Friends Act, there's genuine questions that can continue surrounding this manager. Play that. Play that team there and let's see what we've got. Let's see if we can take some confidence. Let's stop demotivating players that are actually performing well by punishing them for playing well by rewarding players that aren't they? And that was the fourth goal, but it was obviously the last goal we're going to break down when we started to make some other changes. The likes of Proper came on, the Na Nana came on eventually. And that Tavernier still got to play, and I keep thinking of that quote, sorry, for Clement when he said Tavernier can't kind of be expe expected to play every game this season. Well, he's played every game and he started every game this season, so it's been a bit of a weird contradiction there. But again, we see the rest of the game. There was a great last 10 minutes. It was a bit scrappy, but the game was done and dusted. I love the energy with Raskin at the end of the game and all that as well. Still running, still play playing his arse off. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I was very, very encouraged by what I saw. And I'm very happy what I saw. Again, there's still that lingering feeling of, oh no, he's just going to undate it all when we get to Sunday by playing Dessers, by playing the boys again and reverting actually back. But, you know, if we go out there and play Raskin, Raskin and Baron, Diamande, Bedrami, Barami, sorry, Cherney and Igaman on Sunday. Yeah, we could have something there. Let's reward that. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It was Rangers 4, FCSB 0. Scants were pulled, goals were scored, three points were won, smiles were put on faces. Who was your man of match? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comments section below. For me, it's got to be between Cherney, Baron and Raskin. But if you're putting it and you want me to really answer that honestly, I thought Raskin, considering where he's been, no playing much, out in the cold, is he wanted, is he no, the effort he put in and the way he worked with Baron was excellent. So I'm going to give it to me, Raskin. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below. And as always, I've been CJ Nova92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye. All aboard the. That's not making it in. All aboard.